So what's wrong with Christian media? Stay tuned. My name is Zeke Matthew, and welcome to Animated Christian, where we discuss questions about the church as well as original content. Before discussing what's wrong with Christian media, first we need to define what media is. And a definition of media is a channel or system of communication, information, or entertainment. You see, looking at this definition, it's a way of communication and entertainment. And unfortunately, Christian media does a poor job at this. First of all, Christian media seems to have this reputation of being family friendly or sweet clean for Christians for some odd reason. I'm not sure why this is, and if you have any ideas, leave them in the comments below. And if the Christian media goes so far in a certain direction, then it's no longer considered Christian, but an outcast, but too Christian for the secular crowd, but too unchristian for the Christian media crowd. So looking at Christian media, it seems that all all characters must be Christian or go to church, and it must be the focus. Even the music must be the same. A while back, in one of the videos I made about Christian movies, which you can find in the video card above, there was a comment on that video that said, makes me wonder who these Christian movies are for. I thought this comment is so profound that it asked a good question. Christian media likes to wrap itself in this family-friendly, squeaky-clean blanket, and you must follow that when you make your Christian movie. It's always a one-sided story. But can I ask, why are non-believers and non-Christians treated as a bad guy? It seems like you're aiming at Christians, but ignoring the Christian decree. That said in Mark chapter 16, verse 15, go out into the world and share the good news with all of creation. But if a non-believer is considered the bad guy, then how can anyone get saved? Yes, I know through Jesus, but when you're using them as a bad guy, you're rejecting this command to go out and preach the gospel to everyone, not just everyone you know. The second thing is this idea that all Christian media needs to be the same or follow a certain structure. Sure, there should be some order, but not to the point where you suck all creativity out of it so it can follow that rule. A lot of times when Christians become more creative in their craft, it gets rejected by the Christian media community as if it were not Christian enough and should not be looked at as a secular way, but just a different way to view the message. A lot of times Christian media seems to indicate that if you don't go to church or or you do something radical that's different from the norm, then it's considered from the devil. And sometimes that might be true, but not in all cases. It's just a different way to preach and teach the message. A lot of Christian media reject change, and under no circumstances should it change unless society is moving that way or if it's cheap enough to use. This is why not a lot of people follow Christian media, because it refuses to get with the time and plans to make tradition with new stuff. And what does the Bible say about this? In Matthew chapter 9 verse 17 says, you you wouldn't pour new wine into old wineskins. If you did, the skins would burst, the wine would run out, and the wineskins would be ruined. No, you would pour new wine into new wineskins, and both the wine and the wineskins would be preserved. In this verse, this is what Christian media is doing. They're trying to pour new wine into old wineskins. So is there a way we can fix this? There might be a way to turn this around, but first the Christian media community needs to loosen its grip 
and stop thinking everything's from the devil. Second, just because it's different does not mean it's from God. Study your Bible before making judgment. Second, let Christians be more creative. Don't just reject everything that comes in front of you because it does not follow your standard. Instead, embrace it and let God lead you in this manner. Finally, be an overseer helping Christians, but not ruling over them. Let the Christians be creative and stop rejecting something if you don't understand it. Don't be afraid to talk about more mature topics and themes. It does not have to be squeaky clean and an unrealistic sense, but a more realistic sense. I think one of the reasons Christian movies are rejected by Hollywood is not because it's Christian, though that might be the case for some, but because your characters and story has no depth or it's just not interesting to grasp onto. And please stop using the excuse that you're being persecuted because you were rejected. Try to figure out why it was rejected. What did they say you needed to do to improve upon it? So I want to leave you with this. Make non-believers and Christians both real characters and not one-sided. Let Christians be creative. That's all we ask and to be heard. So I hope this helps you in Christian media and gives you practical steps you can take to improve on Christian media. And never forget, Animated Christians, it's just for you.